morning, everybody. Welcome to the Vine Church. Stand up and worship with us this morning.
excited about that and I just had surgery come on uh, how is everyone better that's better that's better we will enhance it we'll have the clap track we'll get that going on there you can go ahead and have a seat for a second because y'all know I'm gonna talk for a minute I'm gonna try my darndest not to but my name is Tyler West I get to serve as the lead pastor and the founder here if there's any way I can serve you you can reach out to me at tyler.west at divine.tv or you can call me on my cell phone at 864-706-9634. But here at the Vine Church, I just want to talk to you about three things today. And the three things I want to talk to you about today are this. You see, at the Vine Church, we want to be the church that turns the world upside down with the gospel instead of being the church turned upside down by the world. We're going to do that in how we love God and how we love others. We say it all the time because we mean it, and it's how we want to live. So how we're going to love God and love others today is if it's your first time here at the Vine Church, we would love to invite you to the garden. We have a free gift for you. If you're watching online, just know when you come in here, we have a free gift, which is a lot of times what you expect for churches, but really the gift that we want to give you is a way that you can contact us throughout the week. We would love to exchange information with you. If there's any way we can serve you or pray for you, you have a way to get out and reach to uh, reach out to us. So if you would like to do that and you would like to be a part of that and it's your first time at the Vine, Come hang out with us in the garden. If you're watching online and it's your first time, let us know it's your first time as well. We would love to say thank you for coming to hang out with us. The second way that we love God and love others all the way through uh, is I'm Wednesday night greenhouse gathering. We have that on there uh, each and every week. We hang out at my house at 625. Uh, if you would like information about that and what we're doing, we have fellowship, friends, community, fun, have all of that good stuff. Email hello at thevine.tv, and I promise you we're going to love God in it, and even when we don't get along, we're still going to love others because there's great food, so there's something about that, that that can happen. So come hang out with us on Thursday nights, and uh, we'll have a good time together. I don't know if you know this, but another way that we get to love God and love others, I'm actually sharing four, so hang in here. Well, another way we get to love God and love others is next week is Mother's Day. Has everybody got their cards? Absolutely, this is what you need to do. You need to go online right now and probably get some flowers, cards, uh, and go ahead and beat everybody at the rush. I know it's Cinco de Mayo, so everybody's out eating tacos today. So instead of that, go ahead and get ready for Mother's Day because we're excited because we're going to have guest speaker Starla Ellison here. She brought a great message last year. She's going to be back here again this year. And here's my request for you. Let's fill this place up. There's somebody that needs to hear her word of encouragement. And there's somebody that has not seen someone in the church have someone bring a word of encouragement like that. And especially a church that is willing to say, hey, we are in this together. We want to love God, love others together. So if you want to have a word of encouragement to hear straight from a mother, something I couldn't bring you. Come hang out with us next week as Starla Ellison comes and, and brings a message. So 
Mother's Day next week. Last way that we love God and love others today is this. We do it in how we give. Here at the Vine Church, uh, I, I don't stand up here and talk to you about a percentage. I don't stand up here and talk to you about a number because it's not about that. Jesus talked all the way through his ministry. It's not the amount of the get, it's the heart of the giver. And so he's looking at your heart. He's trying to say, hey, are you coming to me with a clean heart and are you giving in obedience to what I've called you to do? So today, if you want to be a part of that, what we are doing today is something about our heart. We are all about loving God and loving others, and there is a, a place in this community that loves others right where they are, no matter where they are, and they show them the love of Jesus even in the craziest, hardest season of their life, and that's the Carolina Pregnancy Center. And so today, how, how we love God and love others is we have a heart for the house offering that we're taking up today. Uh, we're we're going to have folks bringing in bottles. We're going to have a tithe box at the back that you can denote heart for the house. But what we want to do is just encourage and love on the Carolina Pregnancy Center because we believe in what they are doing each and every week, how they're investing in people who are in a crazy season. A lot of times folks who go to the Pregnancy Center have nowhere else to turn. And what better way to be the gospel and love God and love others than supporting a ministry that's willing to do that. So if you want to be part of part for the house and you say, shoot, I forgot to bring the bottle or I forgot to have something for that, you can give online as well at divine.tv slash give. You can denote Carolina Pregnancy Center Heart for the House offering because here's the thing. I want to present that to them next week on Mother's Day because they're all about mothers. They're all about helping mothers. They're all about walking through this season with mothers and what better way to give them a gift than on Mother's Day. So that's what I got for us. That's how we love God and love others. Thank you for having this moment and this break uh, in between praise. But here's the thing. I don't want to take any longer. So I'm about to pray and after we pray, if you will stand up, and we're going to keep praising, all right? So, dear Jesus, thank you for this day. Thank you for this opportunity that we have to lift your name high and to do what you called us to do. Jesus, uh, none of this is about us. None of this is for us. So I pray that any pride we bring here today, any way that we're trying to make our name famous, Jesus, that you would just remove it and that, that we would just let you flow through us, Jesus, because here's the thing. Uh, we don't know what we're doing. Our eyes are on you, Jesus. All we're doing is stepping in obedience to what you've called us to be. And right now, maybe we've forgotten what that looks like and we've forgotten what it means just to be your child, what it means to rest in you, what it means to have peace in you, and what it means to literally love others the way that you love us. So today, Jesus, I pray that you would open our eyes, that you would warm our hearts, and that you would allow us to see you in a brand new way, Jesus. It's all for your glory, and, and, and you, because of that, you let it be for our good. So Jesus, today, let us turn this world upside down with the gospel. Let us love others and love you like never before. Let us praise you like never before. In your wonderful, precious name we pray. We love you, Lord. Amen. You guys stand and sing with us. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name, sing like never before, oh my soul, worship your holy name.
fullness of your grace. Yes, I remember Calvary when you took my face.
You got to fist bump somebody. I got to feed off you today. We got to be good. I saw some people punching people. That's good. That was all the married people. That's next week's Mother's Day. That's what's going to happen, dads. Make sure you step up your game. Make sure that we're good. Hey, I'm excited about today. I'm excited to be here for real, uh, that we get to be here today. If I, if I, if I sit down, it's going to be good. Just hang in here with me. The weather's a little crazy, right? We're, we're getting a little bit of rain, a little bit of heat, a little bit of reminder that summer's on the way a little bit. We're real sleepy. There was something, we had decaf coffee, didn't we? Is that what it was today? We had decaf this morning at breakfast. But for real, I'm excited over these next few weeks. We're going to be diving into this series called I Want to Believe But. Because honestly, whether you've been following Jesus for 20 years, 20 minutes, or you've only seen him on your grandmother's cross in the living room, or you only talk about him at Christmas because you say the word Christmas, whatever that looks like for you, uh, we've all texted that. We're in a season of I want to believe, but, or maybe we're coming out of a season where we say, hey, I really want to believe, but, and last week we got to dive into to what it means to stand out and, and what baptism means inside of that and what really baptism was about and how we can stand out through baptism. Uh, and today we're going to be talking about how we can stand up, how we can stand up, how, how we can believe for things, but we can still stand up even when we don't feel like it, because if we're honest, it's difficult following a God you can't see. As a matter of fact, it's even more difficult a lot of times when, when it seems that God isn't answering your prayers, when it seems like, like you're all alone in what you're doing, when it seems like you're just going through struggle after struggle after struggle, and it leads to suffering. And so today, I want to have encouragement for us. I want us to be able to stand up even when at times... We may not feel like we can believe. So today we're going to be camping out in Luke 5. And also we're going to be just a short stint in Daniel 7. So if you've got your Bible, you can go ahead and get to Luke 5. Or if you would like one, I say it every week for real. We have free ones that are at the back for the asking. You are welcome to have that. Or if you do what a lot of folks do and do things digitally, you can follow along with us on the Bible app. Hang in here because we have some folks that are watching online, perhaps around the world, believe it or not. People listen to our podcast from around the world when we put the message up each week. So if you're watching from around the world or you're watching online right now, I'm going to show you how you can follow along with us on the Bible app. You go ahead and download the Bible app from your favorite app store. I like saying that every week, you know. Go ahead and open that thing up. Click on the More tab. And once you click on More, click on Events. <clears throat> from there, you're going to see the Vine TV worship experience. I want to believe, but... And today you're going to see stand up. And then not only are you going to find the scripture that you can follow along with us with, you're going to find a place that you can take notes. But once again, as we talked about at the garden at the beginning, you're going to find a way that you can connect with us throughout the week. Because I know that you don't need to reach out to us just on Sunday. We all face Mondays. So if you need to reach out to us throughout the week, you'll find our contact information on there. If there's any way we can serve you or pray for you specifically. So we're going to jump right into this thing called Stand Up. How many folks like lines? It's the sinfulness of your leader right here. I don't like lines either. Everyone, none of us like being in lines, right? Like we hate lines so much like Black Fridays, they, Black Friday ads after Thanksgiving, they knock down doors. I'll tell you the sinfulness of my heart. I hate lines so much because I want to get there first before all the selfish people do. That'll get you. Okay, I had to sink in for a second and then you finally got it. I have to get there before the other selfish people. <laughs> Knee slapper, as my brother would say. But anyway, uh, as, as we get there, uh, we just don't like lines. We don't like lines. I don't, it's our human nature. We don't like waiting for things. It's just something that we don't want to do. And today as we camp out here in Luke 5, we're literally going to be talking about some guys who did not want to wait in line. Uh, and, and, and so that's what I want to talk through today as we talk through this thing called stand-up. And I, I want us to really just focus on some things. And the three things I want us to, to kind of walk through and, and see is this question I want you to write down. It's not going to be on the screen, but something to write down as you're thinking about this. What is G Jesus trying to show us through this healing? We're going to see a miracle happen here. Jesus is going to heal this guy. Many of us have heard this story before, but the question I want you to ask and be able to answer today is, what is Jesus trying to show us in this healing? And maybe a little bit about lines. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. 
So if you've got your Bible today, let's get to Luke 5. We're going to start in verse 17. Start in verse 17. All right? So if you've got your Bible, let's jump into a story that most of us have heard or have at least heard about. So here we go. Luke chapter 5, verse 17 says this. One day Jesus was teaching, and the Pharisees and the teachers of the law were doing what? Sitting there. <laughs> Sitting there. You know, uh, that's, that's something, if you got your Bible, highlight that, circle that, because that's important. They were sitting there. Everyone else had come from every village of Galilee and from Judea and Jerusalem, and the power of the Lord was with Jesus to heal the sick. Some men were doing what? They came carrying a paralyzed man on a mat and tried to take him into the house and lay him before Jesus. But you see, there was a line. There was a crowd. The house was so full they couldn't get to Jesus. So here's what they ended up doing. When they could not find a way to do this, they ended up saying fire and everybody ran out. No, tough crowd. It is what it is. Starbucks challenge. If you're doing that, that's funny. If you give them the name fire, anyway. So that being said, uh, when they could not find a way to do this because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and they lowered this man on his mat through the tiles into the middle of the crowd right in front of Jesus. So hang in here with me. I'm not Jesus, but I'm telling you, I, I want to be his vessel today so that you can hear him clear, clearly. Imagine, now our Vine Creative team's incredible, and I'm sure they could pull this off, but imagine if the roof like peeled back like a can of sardines right now, and then in the middle of the message, this guy came down on a mat on some ropes and was waiting to be healed because it was so packed in the house. Like, wouldn't you say that was weird? Wouldn't you say that that was a little crazy? Like, some of us would still be sitting there. Some of us would critique the mat and be like, he wore that color on the mat? Like, really? Really, it's too early to be wearing all white. Like, it's one of those things, right? Like, we would be in that mode. Some of us would, would be mad because he was closer to Jesus than us. Some of us, some of us would sit back there and, and look at Jesus and see how he reacted. And some of us would actually jump in and try to help the man down off the mat, right? Like, we wouldn't make him get all the way to the floor in front of Jesus. We would be standing there trying to help guide the mat in. And so that's today what I'm looking at when we're talking about this, uh, this healing is... I kind of want us to see where we're at because as we walk in church today, some of us can be stuck being like those Pharisees and those, the teachers of the law. We talked about how important they were in Jewish culture last week when you were converting to Judaism, you had to sit under the instruction of a teacher is, are we sitting back critiquing or are we trying to get in there and start carrying somebody who needs help and healing? Because it's so easy to sit back and critique hashtag social media, hashtag everything right now. That's literally this, this world we create a lot of times in social media is that sitting back, isn't it? Like we project our best self and how holy we are and share all these Bible verses while we're giving the people the finger that's going back beside us, right, on the way to work because they got us stuck in a line at the red light. I may or may not be confessing right now. I'm just saying wherever we are, like a lot of times we can sit back when we can be a part of something greater. And, and, and what Jesus, I think, is trying to teach us through this miracle at the beginning is the first thing is prior thinking. What is our prior thinking? Like, what are we carrying into this today? What's going on in our lives? Because in the Jewish culture at the time, if you've hung out with me, you've heard me teach on this before. At the Jewish culture at the time, what would end up happening is they believed if you had an illness or infirmity or disability, it was because of hidden sin in your life or hidden sin in the life of your parents. Like, imagine that. I sin enough as it is. I don't want my kids to have to pay for my sin. And I, I'm sure my family before me has sinned plenty enough uh, to, to be here. And so what happened is these Jewish teachers would have nothing to do with this man because he was crippled. He's a sinner. As a matter of fact, we know that it's so important in the Jewish culture, if you ever want to go back and look at it, there was this guy named Job, you know, a lot of times Job, as we might have read it, if you ever read the Old Testament, the old Job. Job, and I think it's Job 18, I tried to write it down here, yep, yeah, Job 18, Job 18, excuse me, this guy named Bildad goes to Job, and the Jews believe that your hidden sin was so important that these infirmities would come out. He goes to Job when all of this calamity is over his life, and he says, dude, just confess, there has to be hidden sin in your life because there's no way a righteous man would walk through that calamity. Job had to walk through that season of I want to believe but. And so that's what I want to ask you today is 
what is our prior thinking? Because when Jesus is about to perform this miracle, he knows the Jewish leaders and the Pharisees are sitting there. Later on, Jesus tells the story of the Good Samaritan, if you remember that. No matter where you are, you've heard of the golden rule where you treat others as you want to, and you've probably heard of this story where the Jewish leaders pass this man who's beaten, robbed, laying naked, and no one helps him but a Samaritan, someone who was the last person to help him. And so what I want to say is right now, I wonder if Jesus is talking to us about our prior thinking. I wonder if Jesus is revealing to us right now, hey, are we just sitting back critiquing or are we jumped in involved in what Jesus wants to do? That's a hard question to ask because I have to ask myself that all the time too. Like, Jesus, I don't see you moving in this. Like, I want to believe you're moving in this, but I'm not sure. Are you sure I have to have surgery to have that removed? Like, are you sure that I have to walk through this? I want to believe, but I'm not sure. And he says, Tyler, are you sitting back critiquing my plan Are you trusting and being involved in it? And so today I want to ask you, what is your prior thinking? Because here's the thing that I know right now for all of us. All of us are lying helpless on a mat like that man in some area of our life. Whether you follow Jesus or not, all of us are. Maybe it's your finances, maybe it's your relationships, your career, your kids, uh, the the, the lack of kids, the, the... the, the job, the job, the job that you have, or the, the people that you're pouring into, all of us are laying on that mat helpless right now for some area of our life. And we have, a, we have a, a preconceived notion of why we're there. As a matter of fact, most of us may think it's because it's our own fault and we don't realize how Jesus is working through it. Some of us actually may have put ourselves on that mat for a reason. The second thing inside of this I want you to, to know is All of us are called to carry a mat of a friend to get them to the feet of Jesus. So here's how I'm going to unpack that. So a lot of us came in here on a mat paralyzed about something. You know, it would have been crazy if if I was Jesus. I'm not, (laughs) so let's go ahead and get that there. But if I was Jesus and this man came down, how different would that story be if Jesus was like the Pharisees? Hey, man, sorry about that sin in your life, but I can't can't do anything for you man you put yourself in that condition it's your dad's fault you can go ahead and blame him you can go ahead and blame your mom you can blame your your aunt and your uncle everybody you can blame everybody I, I can't do anything for you there's sin in your life I can't heal you how terrible would that be yet yet many of us believe the same way don't we We believe there's no way Jesus can move in that area of my life. There's no way that Jesus can do this in my life. We believe so many times that that, that we don't deserve anything. And you know what? Yeah, none of us deserve it. But he promises by his grace and mercy that we are able to be blessed and that he loves us enough to bless us. And so I just want to say where we are is realize that where you're laying helpless on a mat, it's got a purpose in your life. Don't let your prior thinking stop Jesus from moving in your life. Because here's the thing that I know. I mean, I just shared it, and, and you'll hear me a lot of times as I, as I can get up here and tell you. Uh, just having surgery a few weeks ago, I literally was lying helpless on a bed. I had to have somebody drive me to the hospital. Then I had to go into pre-op where they prepared me for a surgery that I couldn't do on myself. And regardless of how hard I begged them to let it be local anesthetic and not put me to sleep, they had to put me to sleep where I was helpless and I couldn't do anything. And then they brought me out of the sleep and I came into a post-op area where I was helpless and couldn't do anything. And you would think, well, that means you were good. You were good to go after post-op. Well, no, 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 no. I was still helpless. I had to get help to the car. I had to get a car ride home. Somebody had to go drop off medication to be picked up, uh, prescriptions for medication. Somebody had to get me into my house. All of those times I was helpless. But if you notice there was something there that was important in my life, someone was there. And what I want you to know is how you walk in your life today. If you're lying helpless on a mat, someone is there with you because you're part of this church. Someone is walking with that season, walking with you through that season. So wherever you are helpless right now, no matter what my prior thinking was, no matter what I thought could be done about this surgery, it had to be done for my survival. It had to be done for me to go through this season that Jesus wants me to go through. No matter how hard I fought him, no matter how much I didn't want it to happen, No matter how hard I prayed for it to go away, it wasn't his plan for it to be that way. I had to have surgery. And so the season you're in and the mat that you're lying helplessly on, I don't want you to think that you're there because it's your fault. Because the surgery I had literally was something that was diseased. It wasn't my fault that it was there. I couldn't help it. 
It had to come out. So right now, I wonder in your life if you're feeling like this man who was crippled from birth, lying helpless on a mat, who thought there was no way that his future would get any better. And today, I want you to be able to talk to someone about it if you need to. Matter of fact, if if you don't want to do it today, come hang out on Thursday. Reach out to us throughout the week. We have people who literally pray for people we don't even know throughout the week that just send a request in. And we would love to let you know that wherever you're lying helpless on a mat right now, that we're with you because that leads to that second question I just asked. What mat are you carrying a friend on to Jesus? Because you see, it's the church. That's what the church is about. The church is knowing that we're helpless on a mat of some sort, but we also have folks who are carrying us. That's what that hospital was. That's what having family getting me back and, and forth to the hospital in my grogginess and in my crankiness and in my, my craziness of surgery. That, that's what it's about because we know that somebody was willing to literally tear the roof off of a house to get me to the feet of Jesus. And so we want to carry our friends and family to the feet of Jesus because here's the thing. Those friends couldn't make that man walk. No matter how hard they tried, they couldn't make him walk. They were still carrying him on a mat. Even if they lowered him down from the roof, they weren't going to allow him to walk right away. Like, there had to be someone that had to get involved, someone that was a savior, someone that had the the power to heal. So they knew that they had to get him to the feet of Jesus, and that's what we have. Guys, that's what community inside the church is supposed to be about. Not only knowing that I'm lying helpless on a mat, that someone's carrying me, that I get the opportunity to carry someone else to the feet of Jesus. That's what the church is, and that's who we get to be. So I wonder if our prior thinking maybe are like the Pharisees where we can sit back and critique everything a church is or isn't, or do we get involved like these friends and say, hey, I don't know what's happening. I've heard about this guy named Jesus, and I've heard he changes lives, and I'm going to rip the roof off of a place to get my friends there to hear about him. And I can't make my friend walk, and I can't forgive my friend's sins, but you know what? I know who can, and I'm going to lay him at the feet of Jesus every chance I get. So I wonder today what our prior thinking is because one of the things that, that I thought of through this where I can get stuck in my prideful thinking and where I can get stuck in my prior thinking is a phrase that came to me and it made me think, man, Tyler, you it's <laughs> hitting you to the core. And it's this, he who stops to admire his own halo will get nothing but a pain in the neck. He who, admires, who stops to admire his own halo will get nothing but a pain in the neck. That's where the, the Pharisees were. And I can tell you, I can get there I can pridefully get there and be like, I do all this great, I do all this. You know what? It doesn't matter what I'm doing. I had, that didn't heal me in this surgery. I had to have it. I had to have it to be healed. It didn't, say, it didn't matter how hard I prayed, how much I give, how much I served, what I did. I had to have that. So today, I just want you to eliminate your prior thinking. I think what Jesus is trying to tell us right now is against all odds, wherever we are, lying helpless on a mat, no, That at the Vine Church, inside the church that is the body of Christ, someone's carrying you to the feet of Jesus. You aren't going to him alone. Even when you are so helpless, you can't get to him and you just want to be in his presence. Somebody's willing to carry you there. And number two, I just want to say there are people here that are carrying others to the feet of Jesus. So get rid of your prior thinking, whatever you think of church, no matter how how crazy you think church is, I wanna promise you, if you're looking for a perfect church, this ain't it, because I'm in it. So I just wanna tell you right now, like, yeah, you you can drink the Kool-Aid somewhere else. I'm not perfect, so this church isn't perfect, but I promise you, you have people here who are willing to walk with you step by step and carry your mat to the feet of Jesus. So number one, prior thinking. Let's continue on with the story. And right here, I wanna share something that you may have heard before, But I just want you to pay attention to this because it's just something that stood out to me, especially when it comes in terms of carrying the mat of someone else. Verse verse 20 says this, when Jesus saw what? Whose faith? Their faith. So wait, wait, wait. You mean that they brought a friend here right now that didn't even have faith that Jesus could heal him? I don't see the friend's faith mentioned. As a matter of fact, that man that was lying helpless on the mat, his faith doesn't kick in until later in this miracle. Right now, Jesus responded when he saw the friend's faith who were carrying him there. So my thing is, I've had folks come to me over this past week, I'm just going to be real with you, but you just got to have faith to feel better. That's awesome. I'm going to tell you what. 
You, if somebody tells me that again, that's awesome because you know what? Yeah, we have to have faith, but you know what? I think Jesus is working in our lives and I, I've, I've grace and truth turned that back on someone to say, how much faith do you have for me to be healed? Because that's the question and that's the answer because Jesus didn't respond to the faith of the helpless man. He responded to the faith of the friend. So if you want to see someone healed in your life, don't walk around like the Pharisee saying, well, it was the sins of his past is why he's in this condition. As a matter of fact, don't say that. You need to have faith that that person can be healed. You need to have faith that Jesus can do what only he can do. And how we do that is carry people to the feet of Jesus. That's the faith that we're required to have and that's the faith we're called to have. It doesn't mean that we don't pray without ceasing. It doesn't mean that we we don't have faith. So I just want you to see inside of this story, this friend was healed and his story of healing started when his friends had faith that he could be healed. So as we carry that friend on the mat, let's not carry them on the mat for something that can physically be done only on this earth. Let's carry them for something greater. Let's have faith for something greater for them. Because at that moment in time, what ends up happening, Jesus looks at the man on the mat and he says, friend, your sins are forgiven. Now the Pharisees and the teachers of the law began thinking to themselves. You ever been around that? Hey, it's about to be Mother's Day next week. You know that. They know. What you, you ever just had somebody uh, who can say it best when they say nothing at all? Wedding song. You're welcome. Wedding season. Uh, so have you ever been around that? Like Mother's Day's coming up. They just give you the look. They don't have to say nothing. Just give you the look. Spouses can do that. Spouses, you know what each other's thinking and without saying a word, you're just like, I know something's up or I know something's good or they've already figured out my surprise gift for them. They already know my Christmas present. That stinks. I put all that effort in it, right? Like, you ever been around that? Well, that's where these Pharisees were in this moment because sometimes we can get stuck in that, right? From that prior thinking. And I love that's where Jesus is sitting here for a moment and he knows that these Pharisees are like, and this, this is a social media of the time where they just keep it in their heart, but they don't express it. The Pharisees think to themselves, who is this fellow who speaks blasphemy? How dare he heal this person? And who but God can forgive sins? Who but God alone can forgive sins? Hmm. So I love about Jesus. Y'all think Jesus wasn't salty. He was pretty salty. I love about it. He, he sits here and he knows exactly what they're thinking. And he asks this, why are you thinking these things in your heart? You see, we, we know that verse, how the overflow of the heart and the mouth speaks. But you see, they were trying to keep it quiet. They were trying not to think. They thought, well, we'll just think it and we won't say it. But Jesus knows what they're thinking in their hearts. And that's what I want to tell you today is whatever faith you're having for that friend to be healed Jesus sees your heart. You can have faith, faith and fake encouragement and fake I'm coming alongside you all day long, but it'll be found out. And Jesus didn't die for us to be fake. He died for us to be real, to say, hey, I've been there. <laughs> I know exactly how you feel. And right now you want to believe, but you don't want to believe. Like, you know, right now you feel like you're not going to get through this season, but I promise you, you're not walking through it alone. And Jesus is going to do what only he can do. And I know exactly how you feel in this season, not to be fake and Rah, rah, re, you're going to get through it right away. Because I'm going to tell you, I've tried to rah, rah, re right now, and that just hurt doing that. It still hurts, y'all. Like, there's moments in our life and seasons in our life where we're that way. So I just wonder if we would just be real to say, hey, I, I may not be able to heal you, but I can walk with you through the healing and through the season. And that's what's happening right there. Instead of seeing that this man is about to be healed, the Pharisees are more mad because of what Jesus said instead of seeing the change that's about to happen in him. And so Jesus looks at him and asks this crazy question. Which is easier, to say your sins are forgiven or to say get up and walk? You know, to me, I think that's a really hard question to ask. And that's a really hard question to answer. And that leads us to number two, our priorities. Jesus is teaching us about our prior thinking, trying to rid us where we're wrong in our prior thinking, but he's also trying to teach us about our priorities because Jesus right there is clearly laying out the priorities. He seriously could have looked at the man right away and said, get up and walk. But instead, he started by saying, friend, your sins are forgiven. Jesus is showing us right there what's more important to us. And if we're trying to pray for and walk with our friends through seasons where, where they want to believe, but we've got to believe that what's important, more important in the kingdom of God isn't the healing that happens on this earth. 
It isn't the healing to overcome a, maybe addiction or financial issues or, or weight issues or, or career issues. It's actually more important for something eternal to happen in their life. You know, when I looked at this, I, I said, man, if I was the friend, I wonder what I would be praying for because many of us say it this way. If they'll get this one area of their life right, everything else will fall into place. Anybody ever heard that? Anybody ever said that? I know I have. And we think, well, if they just get their finances straight, then their relationships will be good. Everything will fall into place. And that's where those friends probably were at the moment of time is if this man can just walk, his life will come into, his life will be good. If he can just walk. You see, there was something greater there. Jesus wasn't concerned about the man walking. He was more concerned about the man having his sins forgiven. You see, for us, we think so many times that if we change the outside circumstance, that will lead to the inside change of the heart. But Jesus is saying our prior thinking is wrong in that and we have to have our priorities right. As a matter of fact, what's happening inside will actually change our outside. What I mean by that is if, if you're in debt to your eyeballs, that don't mean that tomorrow you're going to be debt free. That just means that in Jesus Christ, if you have the hope of Jesus Christ, you can follow and walk with him step by step through that season for him to help you get out of that debt. That means it's going to be gone tomorrow. That inward change that you have will help your outside circumstances. But this man, this man's outside circumstances, his whole life was that he was helpless. Which leads me to that question. Which is easier to say? Because to me, I would think it's easier to say your sins are forgiven. Because who would know? Who would know? In my human mind, who would know? Only me and the man. Only me and that man would know if his sins were forgiven. Nobody else would know if his sins were forgiven. And so many times what happens in our world where we hear, well, church is full of hypocrites. Absolutely, we got plenty of room. There's plenty of more that can be a part of it, right? Like, that's where we are. Like, who would know that the sins were forgiven but the man? But yet Jesus knew that it was more than just saying the sins were forgiven. It was about doing something about the sins being forgiven, right? So like to me and the rest of us, we would say, well, if it's get up and walk, I'm praising Jesus. Like, it's to set off the confetti cannons and the fireworks. Like, everything crazy awesome's happening. But it's more important than to have all these miracles happening around you. The miracle of eternal life is more important than the miracle of walking, the miracle of going through this life without my, without my hand or without a part of my body or, or going through this life without, without the car that I want, going through this life without the relationship that I want, the circumstance that I want. Having eternity with Christ Jesus because my sins are forgiven should be my top priority. And that should be the top priority for me, for all of us. Because here's the thing, in the church, in the church, it's really easy. So for everybody who was with me earlier this morning, it's a rehash, I'm sorry. You're going to hear it again because I just believe it. For the church, it's really easy for us to get our priorities out of line. We can be so busy building the kingdom that we forget the king. We forget the king. That can be the hardest thing in the world. As a matter of fact, for me as the pastor of this church, I care more about what you're doing in your quiet time and what Jesus is teaching you through this than I care about anything you do. But the world isn't wired that way. The world cares more about what you can do for me and what you have done for me lately. And so many times it's crept in the church where we forget it's not about building the kingdom. That's part of it. It starts with worshiping the king and trusting the king first and foremost. Another way to say it is this, and I've heard it said this way and you've heard me say it. We can do a lot of things great for God, but we're called to operate from God. And it's one thing to do great service projects and it's one thing to have great service, but if we aren't tying the gospel in it, that's what Jesus is showing us. It's pointless. It's pointless. It's pointless. And that's what I love, that we support organizations that tie the gospel into being the hands and feet of Jesus. It's not just about a great cause. It's actually more importantly about folks who are literally the gospel, the hands and feet of Jesus. They tie the hope of Jesus in everything they do. Because here's the thing. If Jesus would have just healed that man right there and had him walk out first, the potential that he would have a Christless eternity was greater than him having his sins forgiven first then allowing him to walk out. So for so many times in our life, if we want to see our friends and family changed, the answer is forgiveness of their sins first. Then everything else will work out in God's timing. Not everything else worked out and be cleaned up. 
then they can be a part of the church and their forgiveness of their sins happen. So for us, what I want to say as a pastor and where I want us to be is so many times I don't want us to get so caught up in building the kingdom that we forget about the king. I don't want to lead us to a crisis eternity because I was getting ready for this and I was thinking, okay, Jesus, open my eyes where I don't do this well. And he led me to Revelation 2 and he shows the church in Ephesus and he says in that, you can read it in your own time, but Jesus says, you've done some amazing things for me, but I have one thing against you. You forgot your first love. You forgot me. And so I want us as a church to always never forget Jesus. We can do some amazing and awesome things, but I want us not to forget Jesus. He is the reason. He is the reason for it all. So all the healing, all the helping, it's important, and that's part of being the hands and feet of Jesus. That's how we turn the world upside down with the gospel. But we first got to love God, and that bleeds over to loving others. Not love others first and then decide to love God. So for us, when we're carrying people on that mat, I want us to have the right priorities. Let us look for the inward change first. Then the outward will take care of itself. So let's look for that first. Let's go on to the last thing that Jesus is trying to teach us in this story. He's really teaching us two more. But the last thing he's trying to teach us through this miracle is this, and it starts in verse 24. But I want you to know that the Son of Man, if you've got your Bible, circle right in the margin. If you don't feel comfortable circling or writing in your Bible, if you see mine, it's all written in. It's okay. Uh, wherever you are, circle that, that Son of Man. We're going to come back to that. But it says he has authority on earth to forgive sins. He's answering that questions that the Pharisees were thinking. Remember, they didn't say out loud who has the power to forgive sin. They thought it in their head and their heart. And he's answering that question publicly out loud to them. So he looks at the paralyzed man. He says, I tell you, get up off your mat, get up, take your mat, and go home. When? Immediately. We just talked about priorities. Don't get it mixed up. His sins were forgiven first. Then he experienced physical healing. He had to have spiritual healing then physical healing. Jesus knew that the priorities had to be right because once he had forgiveness of his sins, immediately that man could stand up physically. So immediately he stands up in front of everyone, this man who got lowered down, like, like lowered down on a mat, stood up. If you saw that right now, we'd probably be going crazy and going nuts and think, oh my goodness, this is so amazing and it's so awesome but we got to see that Jesus forgave his sins first, then he got to walk. He took what he had been lying on. This is what I love about this story. He picks up his mat at that moment in time, and he goes home praising God. I, this is a question I want to ask you before we go on. What do you think he was going to do with that mat? I think he was going to bring somebody else to Jesus. I think that's what we're called to do when we're lying helpless on that mat and he heals us and he helps us after we've had forgiveness of our sins, whatever season we're walking into in our life, whenever he lifts us up off that mat, he's saying, pick up that mat. I didn't die for you to lie powerless on that mat. Pick up that mat and go out there and tell people about me and you carry somebody else back here so you can tell them, hey, I didn't think he could come through either, but look what he did for me. I gotta carry him to Jesus and show him Jesus and have faith that they can be healed. I love that. He picks up the mat he had been laying on and he goes home praising God and everyone was amazed not at the forgiveness of the sin but the miracle that's what Jesus faced his entire ministry and they gave praise to God they were filled with awe and said we have seen remarkable things today the third thing that Jesus is teaching us about is power is power or authority I had to keep it with the P's I like the P's in there sorry prior thinking <laughs> priorities and power there's just it's the three P's it just works a little better than authority the power. You see that son of man thing that I gave you? That's something that's so important. And we're going to see here in Daniel 7 why that is. Because when Jesus said that to the Jews, something clicked. When he said that to the Jewish leaders, remember I've been, I've been trying to share with you what Jesus has been showing me in the Old Testament a lot of times as we go in the New Testament. Things that we can miss that I've missed a lot of times in my walk with him. But when Jesus, when Jesus said son of man... They had this verse click back. And in Daniel 7, it says this about the Son of Man. This is Daniel's vision, and it says this. In my vision at night, I looked, and there before me was one like a son 
of man. Now, if you've got your Bible uh, and you're looking in that, a lot of times you can look down at the bottom. If you've got a study Bible, a lot of times you'll see that it says that the Aramaic phrase for that means human being. And that this phrase, son of man, is what refers to the title of Jesus in the New Testament. So most of the time when you hear people talk about Jesus being the son of man, they go back to this Daniel 7 verse. So in other words, God is now a human being in the Old Testament. Tell me Jesus wasn't in the Old Testament. Come on, he's right there in Daniel's vision. So son of man coming in the clouds of heaven, he approached the ancient of days and was led into his presence. He was given authority, glory, and sovereign power. All nations and peoples of every language worshiped him. What just happened in that story? They were all worshiping. That man was worshiping God. The people were in awe. Now, they might have looked at the outward more than the physical, more than the the inward at that moment, but they were worshiping him. And so when Jesus was even doing this miracle, he was pointing back at prophecy being fulfilled and the power that God gave him. It says his dominion is an everlasting dominion that will not pass away, and his kingdom is one that will never be destroyed. So when Jesus is saying that he is the son of man, he is making a proclamation that heaven has invaded earth. The kingdom of God is at hand. And this is why early in his ministry, this miracle happened is because he is straight up dropping it on the Jewish leaders. And from that moment on, they were ready to kill him. That's what started the hate. That's what started. They said, oh no, he doesn't look like the Savior's supposed to look. He don't talk like the Savior's supposed to talk. And he don't walk like I think the Savior's supposed to walk. He's not the Messiah. So they tried to kill him. At that moment on is when they started scheming in their heart and saying, ah, we got to get rid of this guy because he's taking our power away. And so what Jesus is trying to teach us in this is whose power are we falling under? Ours or his? No matter what, I didn't have the power to perform surgery on myself. It would have been bad. It would have been real bad. Nor did those I love have the power to do it, but they got me to someone who could. And that's what Jesus is telling us. Whose power are we resting in? Are we resting in our power? Are we trying to, are we trying to leave this huge legacy? Or are we just trusting that Jesus is going to do what he said he's going to do? Through his power, and his power alone. Because you see, that's, that's something that he's reminding the Jewish leaders of right here. Because you see, for 400 years from the Old Testament to the New Testament, they hadn't heard from God. And all of a sudden, John the Baptist comes, who we talked about last week, who they say, we're, we're afraid to say was a prophet, the Jewish leaders. And now Jesus comes, and they're like, there's a prophet in our midst. Oh my goodness, we're a part of something. Holy cannoli. I don't know if they had cannoli then, but we're going to say, holy cannoli, this could be the Messiah. But I don't like him. He don't look the way I want him. He don't hang out with the right people. He doesn't have the right Facebook friends or the right Twitter followers or, or he's not part of the right groups. He's not part of the right, his, his filters on Instagram are trash. Like, it's just terrible. I don't like him. I don't like that he's healing a man for sins because if he has the power to heal sins, then, oh my goodness, He's going to rob the church of tithes and offerings because they're going to go follow him instead and not give money to me so that I can have what I want as a leader. My friends, that's what scares me the most about the church is that can creep in the church so, so quickly. So, so quickly. And that's when we worry about the outside instead of the inside. So Jesus is declaring right here that his ministry on earth is here the kingdom of heaven is at hand and something crazy amazing is about to happen for the first time in human history we're about to experience everyone having forgiveness of their sins not just jewish people not just people who could bring a sacrifice to the temple not just people who showed up for the festivals all the time not the people who we talked about last week that are just ceremonially clean and and walk through circumcision and 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 walk through the 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 scholarship literally of someone who was an elder in the church no 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 for the first time in human history anybody can experience the forgiveness of sins. And today, what I want us to be able to see and what I want us, I believe that Jesus has just been reminding me is that when's the last time that we had the eyes to be reminded that anyone can be forgiven of their sins? Anyone. Not the people that we like, even those that hate us and do us harm have the opportunity to be forgiven for their sins. How much different would the world look if we lived like that? 
We wouldn't live in this fake Twitter universe that we all live in, right? Where we're just trying to hide behind masks and hide behind fakeness. We could actually be real and say, I don't have it together, but I'll carry your mat because I know you're helping me carry mine. And when we get to the feet of Jesus, something that only he can do is going to happen. So how does Jesus call us in this moment to be like this man? The reason that we talk about stand up today is literally the man's never stood in his life and he stood up because of Jesus. So how is Jesus calling us to stand up and live this out, this power that he's given us, this declaration that heaven is at hand, that the kingdom of heaven is here and that heaven has invaded earth in his three things, question, action, and commission. Don't worry, I'm gonna unpack it. Question, action, and commission. When I look in this story, I look and say, well, what did Jesus do to help us see how we can live out carrying our friends on a mat to him? How we can live out even in our helpless moments that we can be at a place where we're at one with Christ, where we can show the kingdom of heaven is at hand and that heaven has invaded the earth in his question, action, and commission. Jesus starts with a question. Look at this. He, he asked those Jewish leaders, he said, why do you think this in your heart? What's easier? To forgive someone of sins or to tell them to get up and walk? He starts with a question. And so the question I think that he's asking us today is this, that I want to ask you. What question is Jesus asking you today about your mat that you're lying helpless on? What question is he asking you? Maybe he's asking you to say, look up and, and look at the community around you and see the people that are walking with you through it. Maybe he's saying, hey, I know that you think that I'm punishing you, but this is for your good. Watch what happens when I get done. Where are we at on our mat? What's the question he's asking us today on our mat? Number two, the action. The action, literally, what happened? Jesus said, friend, your sins are forgiven, but also he says, I tell you, take up your mat and go home. What next step is Jesus calling you to take as you lie on this mat helpless to step into his power and stand up for him. Because I know he's calling you to a next step. He's not calling you just to lie there. He's not calling you just to, to, there are times he calls you to be still, absolutely. But even in that being still, he has given you a next step. And today, maybe you've had fear of taking that step. Maybe you don't think you're good enough to take that step. Maybe you don't think that you look the way you need to look, talk the way you need to talk, or be the way you need to be. But today, I promise you, he's given you a next step. Will you just listen? Because it starts first with a question. You gotta be willing to face that question. That, that man who was helpless on the mat had to face the question that he couldn't get in that house and those friends dug that hole in the ceiling and dropped him down. And then Jesus gave him an action and now he had a moment to respond. And when he responded, all of a sudden, many people have come to Jesus through that. So I wonder, would you know that your next step is actually gonna help someone else step up off that mat? Can you trust and believe that? And last but not least, the commission that Jesus gives. It says, immediately he stood up, immediately he stood up and took what he had been lying on and went home praising God. Jesus sent the man out on a mission. He commissioned him to say, go out there and show the world what I have done in you. And for those of us that have a relationship with Jesus, I just wanna say this. How is he asking us to take that mad experience and share it with others and grow, share our story so that others can see how he has changed us and that literally might be how we get them on the mat to bring them to him. That literally could be what's the difference between them only seeking what this earth can offer versus what Christ Jesus alone could offer. That could literally be the difference in them and spending eternity in heaven and being forgiven of their sins or literally just going and chasing the corporate ladder or chasing money or chasing a relationship, chasing the things that this earth has. So today, what is he calling us to? What has he called us to? To stand up because he never called us to stay down because here's the thing. Maybe, maybe we're believing for change. You know, I, the reason I brought up that faith thing is Jesus reminded us that if we have faith of a mustard seed, we can move a mountain, but... You ever had a mustard seed? You ever tried to hold a seed in your hand? It's like the hardest thing in the world, isn't it? It just gets all over. I got, I got fat fingers and big hands, so I can hang on a little bit, but like it can get lost. I mean, just hanging on to that seed is so crazy, but Jesus, Jesus sees the faith of us and says, hey, we can do that, but 
thing we got to do to move the mountains, we got to involve him. So today, maybe he's asking you, when's the last time you've involved him in your decision making? When's the last time you involved him in helping you through this season? When's the last time you sought him to say, Jesus, I want to believe, but I want to believe you're working this out for my good, but I just, I, I can't see it. What, what is he trying to show you today? Because the thing is, you may have asked Jesus and involved it, and we could have those different reasons. Like I said, maybe, maybe you think you're too beyond help and you're so far gone that he can never help you. You're wrong, my friend. You're wrong. He didn't come to this earth, let heaven invade earth, live a life we couldn't live, die a death we deserve on that cross right there so that we could live powerless. No, no, no. He rose from the dead on the third grave so that we could have power in this earth so that we didn't have to clean ourselves up. He's already done the work. He's finished the work. So maybe you're too worried that you're too far gone to be saved. Maybe you think you got to clean yourself up, that you got to wear the right shirt and wear the right shoes and, and look the right way and play the right part before Jesus can change you or move into your situation and move in your life. And my friend, that's not what what he came to do that's not what he called to do or maybe you just think I can't approach him and if you think that today I want you to look up on that mat you're lying on helplessly thinking you can't approach him and see all the people that are around you that are willing to carry you to his feet and we'll do it together you can approach him You've got people here who will help you get to his feet and approach him because one of the most freeing things I learned in my walk with Jesus and even through this is something that you might have heard for the first time or, or something that you're gonna hear me say many times is this. The most freeing thing anyone ever told me about my walk with Jesus is God has one expectation of me. And I was like, man, I know what this is gonna be. Okay, God's got an expectation of me. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta be like Hulkamania. I gotta be Bible mania, right? Like I gotta eat my vitamins, say my prayers and read my Bible and like eat my cereal and do all this. Like I gotta do that. I gotta spit out Bible verses everywhere I go. And, and when I walk on the street, everything that I touch is just gonna be healed. Like that's what his expectation of me is to be so perfect and have it all together that the world can't help but see him. If I had that non-easy button right, I don't know what that would be. I want you to know, friend, and I want everyone in the house to know today, the only expectation God ever has of us is to fail. Is to fail. And I'm going to tell you right now, I'm pretty good at that. I bat a thousand at failing. And we look at failure in the wrong way. Hear me out. He didn't call us to fail to stay down. He called us to fail with faith to stand up. Because every time we fail, it's one step closer to being exactly what he created us to be. We were never, we are not perfect. Only through him can we be found perfect. So today, maybe you're not approaching him because you think you got to have it all together. You think that, that you're such a failure, he can't save you. And I just want to say, if you think you're such a failure, he can't save you, welcome to the club because I'm a failure too. And I'm nothing without him. And it was only through him that I could be saved. It was only through him that I could have forgiveness of my, my sins. It's only through him that I could have life that he died to give me and so today I don't want you to un I want you to understand God has no expectation of you but to fail because there's freedom in that John three sixteen and 17 says it this way in that it says for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life most of us know that verse by heart but this is where I would tell you where you see God's expectation for us was just to fail and trust his son as our Lord and Savior to have everlasting life. It says this, for God did not send his, world, his son into the world to condemn it. He didn't send his son into the world to say, y'all don't have it together. Y'all need to get it together. You need to be perfect to come to me. The reason that you're dying in sin, the reason that you're struggling so much is because you're, so un, you're not perfect. You need to clean yourself up. No, 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 no. He didn't send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that to save the world through him, but that through him the world might be saved. That's what another version says. But to save the world through him. And so the question that I have for you is the question and the reason we do this each and every week. Have you ever given your life to Jesus? Have you ever had that moment in your life where you can say that you have experienced forgiveness of your sins? Maybe you're trying to clean yourself up so much that you can experience forgiveness of your sins. You think, if I just get this right, then everything else will fall in line. Then can I, I can approach the throne of Jesus and have it together. But friend, that's not what he came to give you. 
Now is your time. Now is your chance to stand up and receive forgiveness of your sins. And so right now in this moment, we pray as a family together. I just want to ask you, have you ever experienced life? Are you trying to chase the things of this earth, the things that are temporary? Or are you trying to look at the things eternal? Because I promise you what? One thing, the outward circumstance will change for a minute, but you'll find yourself circling around at the same place time and time again if you don't first experience an inward change that can only come through Jesus Christ. So have you given your life to Jesus? It's not the words of this prayer that saves you. It's the faith that Jesus is who he says he is. And I'm telling you right now, I'm having faith that someone is listening for the first time and can hear him for the first time and have eyes to see Jesus for the first time to realize it's not about cleaning myself up. It's not about having it all together. It's just about receiving his gift of salvation. And so with every head bowed and every eye closed, I'm gonna ask everyone to repeat this prayer after me for the benefit of those who are coming to Christ for the first time. Dear Jesus, I believe I'm a sinner <clears throat> separated from you. I believe you lived a life I couldn't live, died a death I deserved on the cross, but loved me enough not to stay dead, but rose again so that I may have life. Teach me to follow you step by step for the rest of my life the best way I know how. And if that's you right now and for the first time you can say that you have received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I'm gonna ask you to raise your hand and respond. I'm gonna count to three. One, two, three. If that's you right now, if that's you and you can say for the first time that you've given your life to Christ, that you've for the first time experienced forgiveness of your sins, I'm gonna ask you to respond. Maybe you're watching online and that's you, and, or, or maybe you're listening in the middle of the week, or maybe you're actually in another country right now listening to this. And I want you to know, we wanna celebrate this with you. You're gonna see a hand raised. You're gonna see a place that you can leave comments. You're gonna see a form you can fill out that says, I received Jesus today. If that's you, I'm gonna ask you to respond. And I want you to know that wherever you are, there are people walking with you step by step through the season that you're in. I'm about to say a prayer and then I'm gonna ask everyone to stand and worship and we're gonna worship like we're not laying on this mat today, guys. We're gonna worship like we're not working in our power but Christ's power. We're gonna worship like our prior thinking isn't holding us back and we're gonna worship because we know that only through Christ Jesus have we experienced forgiveness of our sins. So dear Jesus, thank you for this time. Thank you for this opportunity that you have given us today to lift your name high. Thank you that we get to experience you and we get to be a part of your power, that our prior thinking and that we aren't defined by our past, we aren't defined by our circumstance, we aren't defined by what happens to us, we are defined by what you wanna do through us. And Jesus, you died to give us life. You died so that we could have salvation. So Jesus, I pray today, wherever we're lying, help us on a mat, that we know that through you, we don't have to stay down anymore, that we can have life and live it to the full. So Jesus, in this moment, let us praise you like never before. We love you, Lord. It's your name we pray. Amen. Now stand up and sing with me. How great the chasm that lay between us. How high the mountain I could not climb In desperation I turned to heaven And spoke your name into the night Then through the darkness Your loving kindness Tore through the shadows
Let's lock it up and pray like we always do uh, here at the end. And I'm just going to pray for us that we carry our mat and that we wouldn't just be trying to walk around with this mat of dead weight or this, this, this mat that we think has no purpose, but that we would see the purpose of the mat we get to carry. And I'm going to pray that whoever Jesus puts in our path this week that we know needs to be on that mat. They come back here and hang out with us next week for Mother's Day because it's going to be awesome. So let's pray. Jesus, thank you for this time again. Thank you that you saved us. Jesus, where we wanted an outward change first, you died to give us an inward change so that we could spend eternity with you, not just experience something on this earth, but experience something forever. Thank you for dying for us. Thank you for invading earth with the kingdom of heaven. Thank you for not letting us stay lying on this mat. Thank you for healing us where we thought we could never be healed. Thank you for allowing us to even as we walk in seasons where we say, I want to believe, but Jesus, we don't have to walk through them alone. And so Jesus, as we go out, you've asked us the question today. You've given us the action of the next step. And Jesus, I pray that we would be on commission and that we would be out this week and we would see those that you place in our path that we need to bring back here on this mat next week. Not so that we can receive glory or so that we can receive praise, but Jesus, so that you can do the work that only you can do. So Jesus, let our eyes be open. Let our ears be open. Let us bring back next week those who need to see you for the first time. We love you, Lord. It's in your name we pray. We can't believe you let us do this. Amen. Join us next week for Mother's Day. Starla Ellison is going to be here. It's going to be an awesome service. Have an awesome week.